Thanks for joining back. It's loading. Just give me some moment. Give me some time. Wow. It's creating a problem again. It's not moving forward. Okay, I'll do it the other way. Excuse me. I believe you can see the screen. I believe you can see the screen, right? Okay, so we will move forward and uh, we were at stage four of strategic planning or the project monitoring plan. It's also called as PMP, project monitoring plan or project planning plan, you know, or strategic planning of the project. However, we want to call it strategic planning or the project monitoring plan, PMP is devised and at the project planning stage now or it is at the planning stage and at this planning stage when because we're talking about monitoring and evaluation here you can put it in brackets saying that at this at the planning stage pmp is also prepared that is the project monitoring plan is devised during the project planning stage next is the fourth stage is execution of the plan of course after you plan you have to execute it that is you have to put it into action Next is execution of the plan and simultaneous monitoring. That means while you're executing the plan, we have simultaneous monitoring there. I told you why uh, or what is the need for monitoring. I've told you that how, you know, contractors and subcontractors try to avoid penalties. So they, they try to monitor the projects just to avoid any glitches. And in case there are any glitches or any problems, so immediately they try to sort the problem out or you know resolve the glitches and so on. So contracts execution stage. So at this execution, there's also contracts that are executed. There are contracts that are uh, you know parties enter into contracts at this stage, like employer contractor, contractor subcontractor, subcontractor sub subcontractor, or two subcontractors together. So this is at the contract stage. Then there is execution. Then there is uh, you know monitoring of whatever is being executed. So the project is going on now, it's going to begin now. So this monitoring and this implementation, and this is the control stage. So all this comes under the fourth phase. The fifth part of it is evaluation during the project. And after the completion of the project is the evaluation stage that is uh, almost near the commissioning stage. So they evaluate it. So it's almost at the commissioning stage. And the the last stage is the project closure that is at the time of the final delivery saying that everything is fine and the you know the employer the one who has in, uh, initiated the project they gives they give them a certificate saying that everything is fine now they give them a closing certificate and say that or a commissioning certificate or a closing certificate there are different names depending upon the what it is so they say okay now we give you a closing certificate that everything is done and you know everything is fine and then they close the 
project, but everything does not end there. Apart from that, there is, a, legally speaking, there is a kind of a duration, say a one year or two year, where the, the employer would say, the one who calls for the project would say, like, in case there is any problem, you will have to come and redress the issue in case it's from, I mean, there is kind of a, you know, a guarantee or a warranty period there. Normally, in you know, projects, there are warranty periods. So say one year or two years, so within the uh, period of two years or one year, depending upon what is the project what is the component of the project so they they say that within a period of one year they give them a warranty period saying that okay within a period of one year you come and sort out any issues that may happen uh you know uh say uh, for example i gave you a computer uh, example of setting up of it systems in school or college say now in case the, the it systems uh don't function this they, everything goes blank within a period of two years so this okay within a period of two years i you, i give you this warranty and free of cost the person comes and you know rectifies. so this is something uh, you know after the closing stage what happens or during the closing stage what happens but all these things are already contracted in the fourth stage the understanding is already drawn at the fourth stage that is a contract stage so therefore again repeating for your project life cycle the first thing is inception stage next is the gap analysis or the first stage would be, can also be called a situation analysis stage or inception stage. The second would be gap analysis. Third is project planning stage. And at the project planning, because we're talking about monitoring and evaluation in brackets, you can say at this stage, PMP is prepared at this project monitoring plan is prepared here. Next is the execution stage. Obviously, after you plan, you need to execute. So execute execution stage. At the execution stage, there are a number of contracts also that is apart from, uh, you know, the number of contracts that are signed and the contracts are executed and they start beginning with the work. There is monitoring going on, there's control going on and so on. Next is the evaluation. Almost the, you know, the phases are completed. We are, uh, you know, the milestones are being achieved. Then there is the evaluation part of it. And after the evaluation is the project closure stage. Try to recall whatever, like I have, uh, you know, this is just a recapitulation for you. Next is um, now as for the practitioner's manual on monitoring and evaluation of development projects or infrastructure projects, the achievement, the achievable goals of the project is project goals must be clearly defined a proper SMART criteria. SMART, S M A R T, SMART criteria is aberrated for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. I'm repeating, SMART is for specific, that is, what is the goal? It has to be specific, measurable, that is calculable, attainable, something that can be achieved, realistic, that is, it should not be imaginary. Like, for example, uh, building a, a ladder, you know, to go to the moon and back regularly. Can't say one day, it might happen, but I'm just saying something that is not imaginary, but something which is very realistic. Or, you know, an imaginary project would be picking the moon and uh, bringing it into your house or a company or, you know, whatever. So it, just, it, it has to be a realistic project and not an imaginary project. And it has to be time bound. You know, that project it has a beginning and the end. So it has to be time bound. There are milestones and those milestones have to be achievable ones. Thereby, there is a need to gain a clear understanding of project needs, goals, objectives, and then devise a strategic plan for achieving those goals. The next core interdisciplinary function of or at the project planning or inception is also that of project designing. So you design the project. So project or charter the project. Project designing involves drafting an appropriate vision aligned with the purpose and social, uh, you know, legal environment of the project with the aim of also attracting potential investors and contributors. So a good project design must identify and highlight the problem to be addressed. The purpose you know, to be addressed, the purpose, assess the resources and establish project goals by simultaneously devising an, an appropriate strategy for achieving those goals, fortified with contingent plan, evaluation plan, budget plan, and draft project proposal. So a good project design would have all these factors in it. It would highlight what is the problem, what is the thing that has to be addressed, then what is the purpose, what is the goal to be achieved. They would assess the resources that are available and then they would add it in the project design charter or whatever they're preparing the report. And they would establish 
project uh, goals they would you know define clearly what are the goals to be achieved the milestones to be achieved and then they would devise an appropriate strategy strategizing is a very important part for a project strategizing and planning and strategizing strategizing is uh, something more than planning planning is your plan strategizing is you really you know apply your mind prudence and then create a road map for achieving those goals and it is fortified that is the project design the charter is fortified that it is with a contingent plan what is a contingent plan should there be any problems how i'm going to address a problem this is also a very important factor in project design listen to me carefully contingent plan should form a part of project design why we always have to be ready for any problems that may come so like for example this i'm giving an example people buy insurance why you don't always live about everyday thinking there are going to be problems but however there is an apprehension for example you have uh, if you buy a car you have automobile insurance it's not that we are you know we go out everyday thinking we are going to meet with an accident it's not like that but god forbid there is someone else who comes and dashes the car or something happens to the car so people take uh motor vehicle insurance in fact it's mandatory so motor, most of the countries it's man it's mandatory to take motor vehicle insurance so against accidents and so on so contingent plan so likewise even a project there has to be a contingent plan insurances should be sought contingent plan should be there what if something fails and i will come up with something else if so and so person does not deliver i have a backup plan so fortified with a contingent plan then evaluation plan budget plan and a draft project proposal all these form a part of project design charter okay so it has a vision it has goals of the project it has the goals of the purpose they assess the resources available they establish or they clearly define the project goals and you know even define the milestones there and they simultaneously devise an appropriate strategy for achieving those goals then they fortify it with contingent plan and evaluation plan budget plan and a draft project proposal so bearing in mind the ultimate purpose and goal that is the end of the project or for what purpose the project is a strategical means is designed to achieve the end so basically it is the relationship between means and end the project also you could say there's a relationship between the means and the end the the means to achieve the end the end is to whatever the purpose of the project is the means is the resources and the project itself the design the charter and all this thing the strategy which is in what the means to an end next is probably you already know this but i'm just uh, trying to touch upon this aspect as well in a very light form project designing tools that may be used or lfa that is logical framework approach which is a basic tool that facilitates optimum allocation of resources as on one hand and sets performance measures or standards on the other even for monitoring and evaluation this tool is mostly used for non governmental ngo projects next is zopp or gopp which is actually an abbreviated form for goal oriented project planning and designing so this particular tool would be used for designing a project charter or you know preparing project charter where it would be basically goal oriented project planning and designing next is the components in project designing is first is analysis of the objective analysis of the probable results alternative analysis analyzing the existence of alternatives assess the feasibility propose and choose the best alternative strategy and as per norad 1999 based on the assessment the most feasible and appropriate alternative is selected which would further constitute the project strategy obviously again here what is the most feasible beneficial and appropriate alternative would be always sought because even in project designing as i said earlier there is contingency plan apart from that there will be something alternatives to be chose, chosen from alternative analysis is prepared if something is not available what next rather than waiting rather than waiting for the last moment you know when the problem occurs they 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 try to you know prepare a contingent plan based on the experience of such projects what is the possibility what is the probability of you know of any kind of problems that may exist there next is risk analysis the example of risk what is a risk you know what is a risk that is you know 
Example, somebody wants to invest in the project. It's a risk. The project may not be really, uh, you know, a, a, a really, a, really a project which uh, anyone has done before. But you find an investor who is agreeing to, you know, invest in the project. He takes a financial risk there. Example. So risk anal analysis. Example. Availability of import project materials from different contractors. This is an external risk factor. Identifying internal risk factors such as credit availability, performance bond compliance. These are examples for you. Next is devising strategies to solve the anticipated complexity of problems via strategic management and systemic approach is the heart of a good project design. I'm repeating, devising strategies to solve anticipated complexity, that is contingent complexity of problems, via strategic management and a systemic approach is a heart of a good project design. So therefore, Next part is they have to you know, conclude on final deliverables strategically, pointing out the design chalked out. So pointing out to the entire design, they say, and finally, we are going to achieve this target. This is the target, and this is the final deliverable, and this would be the strategy that we would be using. So that is all about project design. So therefore, the conclusion. Now, I would not go through the conclusion as it is written on the slide because it's the same thing that I've already discussed that if you look around, most of the infrastructure that is built is all project-based, where the project does not come within the ambit of a usual business, but it, it has a definite plan, purpose, beginning, end strategy to attain the purpose and so on. But the primary concern of projects, I would really dwell on this aspect here rather, the primary concern of projects in the monitoring process is the progress, the milestones achieved, the factor of complying with the time schedule, the scope, compliance with the laws. I want you to you know, remember this part. Uh, of course, I'm going to share with you the slides on Google Classroom as well as give you the points. But I want you to just make a note for yourself that you need to highlight this point even for your answers in your exam. So the primary concern of project is in the, in the monitoring process is the progress, the milestones achieved, the factor of complying with time. These are the things they would monitor. The progress would be monitored, the milestones achieved, the factor of complying with time schedule, whether they are, in their own, they are you know, delivering on time, milestones are being achieved on time, the scope, that is the purpose of the project and what other factors are involved there, compliance with laws, there are different laws that need to, need to be complied with. For example, it, uh, like, uh, let me give you the example of the laws that need to be complied with. Okay, let, us, uh, let me give an example of a project. Say, uh, project of building a school, construction project. Now, what are the different laws there? You will have to comply with FIDIC laws, FIDIC uh, rules and regulation. The person has to comply with employment laws because how a project is uh, constructed, you will have, you need workforce, you need people to do that job. You need workers on site, you need engineers off site. So the employment laws have to be complied with. Next is environment and safety laws have to be complied with. So these are some of the examples of laws, compliance with the laws. Then municipality permissions have to be sought. Licenses have to be sought. All these things. Next is, uh, and the project should be, is within the allocated or mobilized budgets. And these, this also is something that will be monitored as the project is ongoing, that whether as they are you know, monitoring, as the project is going on, whether it is within the allocated or mobilized budget. So ME, that is monitoring and evaluation, aids in maintaining tabs on the project, that is checks on the project. Whereas tabs on the project is they maintain checks on the project. They're going to check the project. It's like maintaining tabs or checking on the project or identifying pitfalls, that is any problems or, or any uh, kind of glitches that may be there and addressing them swiftly to successfully achieve milestones and complete the project. So that is the purpose of monitoring and evaluation. Thereby in this subject, that is what we are going to, we are learning at the moment, we shall restrict ourselves to understanding from now on, that is we're going to go to the third chapter, the in-depth monitoring and evaluation process in a project where monitoring you understood and evaluation, just uh, just to set the perspective, I gave you just a light uh, you know, introduction over all these things, bearing in mind that you already uh, studied it uh, and you already had two lectures on it by some other lecturer. So you already know what is monitoring and evaluation. From next class, we will go to the details. That is, we are proceeding towards a third chapter of in-depth 
you know, steps or we're going to learn the analysis that are involved in monitoring or the components which are there in evaluation and so on. So this is all for today. Okay. Uh, thank you, teacher. Welcome, Ahmed. Uh, I am Muhammad. Teacher, if we go up the slides, uh, we've discussed the, the, the contingent balan. Yeah. What the mean, the exact meaning of contingent balan, what it is. Okay. What What is a contingency? The first thing we need to understand yeah. is what is a contingency? Contingency is a, a kind of an event, a problem, just in simple words, something like a problem that they kind of foresee or okay. which may or may not happen. It's not necessarily, it's like a problem that they foresee. That's a contingency plan. For example, uh, insurance. For, for example, the simplest example of it is insurance. Like when we purchase a car, we take insurance. It's not that every day we say that if I go today, we are going to meet with an accident. It's not like that. But we prepare ourselves. Uh, like maybe even if the car is static in a static position, somebody might damage the car. Even if it is just halted, somebody might just damage the car. So we have a contingency plan. We say that, okay, I'm going to take insurance. So if somebody damages the car, I'm going to go and get the, uh, you know, the amount from the insurance. You understand? So that's a contingency plan. Next in, now say now there's a construction project. For that, what kind of contingency plan? Say the workers are not available. Now, say there is some kind of uh, problem that is, uh, you know, or any project that may be held up. So they have a contingency plan. Suppose this, if a payment is not released to say contractor A, I'll have to have a backup plan. So that's a contingency plan. So he might stop his work. So if somebody stops their work, who else I have in mind? That's contingency plan. The idea is the project is not stopped. Milestones are met. You avoid all the penalties there. Yes, yes, Osman. Uh, did you understand, uh, Mohamed? Yes, thank you, teacher. I've understood it. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Okay, welcome. Yes, Osman, tell me. In my understanding, contingency is the rules and, and the policies or the guidelines that has been set mm -hmm. for activity to protect the future problems, the future uncertainty. I think that's my understanding. Is that right? It's right. You, you have uh, exactly. worded it from your textbook. Yeah. No. No, mm -hmm. in a project, for example, yeah, an organization is going to implement on a project. Mm -hmm. uh, they set a rules to follow or mm -hmm. rules to follow to protect the project to be failed in the future. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think that's the, that's the contingency plan. Yes, that's right. That's another way of saying it to protect the project from any future problems. You apprehend yeah. that something might happen and you protect it. Yeah. 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 You're right. Okay. Sometimes so, they, they in, in the security, for example, maybe mm -hmm. some organizations are working in unsecure places. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they set a standard procedure to follow in order to protect the staff. Because okay. of if the staff are not protected mm. and the organization may not work, that, that's why they set a, a standard procedures yeah. to follow. Yeah, that's, that's another that's, example you have given me. Yeah. That's another example. Yeah, that's, You're right. Yeah. So uh, yeah. like uh, a plan would be, suppose there is, an, there is an apprehension of danger there. So you're ready, what is to be done next? Yeah. Right? So that's a contingency yeah. plan. So as I said earlier, in a project, somebody is not going to, you know, someone is going to back up. So you have a backup plan, a back out, I mean, somebody is going to back out. A subcontractor is going to back out. You have a contingency plan ready. If he backs out, I have someone else ready. If somebody, if, if uh, you know, there is some problem which occurs, then something else is ready. So that's a contingency plan. I give you the example of a car also. It, it's just a you know a simple example. We have a plan ready. We, we won't we'll not be sitting just like this. We have a plan, a backup plan ready. That is to fortify our efforts, 
to see that the milestones in a project is achieved. The purpose or the goal of the project is achieved. Nothing is hindered there. So therefore, you apprehend or you might foresee any problem and you do not want anything to come as a hurdle or an impediment towards the smooth working of the project. You have a contingency plan. Contingency plan is not only for you know projects. If you think about it, contingency plan comes even for a person for your personal lives. Contingency contingency plan comes for projects. Contingency plan comes for a country where you have the countries may have contingency funds which are kept aside. Like for example, if there is earthquake, so from that contingency fund, people would you know the government would disburse money to the affected areas. Are you understanding me? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes, this is contingency. Uh, are you understanding? So anything they apprehend the problem, they prepare a plan, so that you know the project in uh, project management terms, the project is not hindered. Basically, something that needs to be done as a backup, that is to be ready for all problems. That is contingency plan. You are equipped. You have a strategy that is if there is if something is going to happen, then I'm going to do this, 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 but not wait for something to happen and then see for the solution. Are you understanding? So this is at the most to the, the, the extent a hu the, the human mind can think for a particular purpose, whatever purpose, contingency plan can be, I mean, uh, created, for example, General example, COVID was not foreseen. The world, you know, the way it has uh, been through the past two years, nobody really saw it before. It just happened. You understand? But there are, you know, uh, they had they had contingency plans, but they never knew it's going to, you know, hamper everything like this. So as far as with experience in a project, or as far as the human mind can conceive, contingency plan will be prepared. Yeah, and the main purpose of contingency plan for project is that it is not hindered. It, there, it, there should be no impediment. And the purpose and the goal of the project and the milestones therein should be achieved. Okay. Okay, so good Osman and uh, Mohammed, I think you got your answer well, even uh, Osman has substantiated it. Okay, I think it's another girl here. I need your attendance, please. Your attendance. Yes. Who's the class leader? Class leader? Yeah, you have a class leader? Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, so one of you, uh, uh, Mohamed or is, uh, Osman, could you just tell me the members who are there present in the class today? Do you know them? Because they just uh, uh, yeah. uh, we can see a members. Uh, there are four uh, six members. Uh, yeah, that is exactly. The With the names because today is the first class. Okay, I will check it. Yeah. 